The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. I'm Brittany Warner with RealAgriculture.com and welcome to another episode of a Wheat School. On today's episode, we caught up with Tom Wolf. He is the owner of Agrometrics Research and Training based out of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. And we chatted with Tom all about water quality today, checking to see what it is you should be looking for. And if you do find a problem, what you can do about it. All right, Tom, so talking water quality, first and foremost, what does that even mean when we say water quality? Yeah, when we talk about water quality, we're interested in sort of the chemical constituents of the, of the water we're going to spray with. And by, primarily we mean pH, primarily uh, bicarbonates, and of course the hard water metal cations that can inhibit some herbicides. Absolutely. And now what does water hardness do and how does it impact uh, spray efficacy? So the hard water cations, and by that I mean calcium and magnesium, there's also iron, uh, sodium and potassium, can actually bind to some herbicides and, and change their shape slightly. And that means it makes it more difficult for them to actually then uh, bind with the enzymes or the, in the, the site of action that they're supposed to inhibit. So it actually reduces the herbicide efficacy through that binding. Now, if you find that you do have hard water and you have that problem, what is the solution? Do you have to use more herbicide or how do you go about fixing that problem? I mean, first of all, you have to know exactly what your water quality is. So I, I would really recommend a proper lab-based water test that you're sure what, what the actual numbers are. The next thing is you have to know which herbicides are susceptible to this, and not all of them are. Uh, for example, glyphosate, Liberty, quite susceptible to water quality. There's also some group ones, the, the grass killers, uh, particularly the dims, are quite susceptible to water quality. And then there's some amine formulations of the group fours, like the 2,4-D amine and MCPA amine formulations. Formulations. The esters are less susceptible. So you have to know what you've got and, and, and how that might affect them. That's, that's step number one. Uh, step number two really is to, to consider, uh, if you have hard water, consider a different water source. Uh, see if you can have a different well or maybe surface water or maybe town water that solves that problem. It can be expensive and it may not uh, work in a pinch. The, the, the best solution really is to condition your water. And there are a number of conditioners out there. Most of them are based on a fertilizer called ammonium sulfate, AMS for short. Ammonium sulfate uh, 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 is uh, probably the most popular and most effective water conditioner. And what it does is the sulfate in the ammonium sulfate um, binds with the hard water cations that can inhibit herbicides. It takes them out of solution, takes them out of the equation. And all of a sudden, then it's essentially like clean water again for those herbicides. Uh, secondly, the ammonium part of the ammonium sulfate actually also helps the herbicides work. So they work slightly better getting across the membrane. That's a proven fact. It's, it's, uh, it's an ion trapping. Now, is that a cost effective method? Is it expensive to add that conditioner uh, to have the herbicide be more efficient? It's certainly a cost. Uh, I don't know what uh, ammonium sulfate's uh, going for right now, but we are adding some pretty high amounts. So depending on how hard your water is, you might be adding uh, three or four kilograms per hundred gallons of water. So in a thousand gallon tank, that's 30 kilos. Uh, that's a, a wheelbarrow full, you know, mm, right. that's an effort. Yeah. It has to dissolve, it takes a bit of time. It dissolves quite readily, mm -hmm. but you also have to maybe make sure that it's spray, spray grade so it doesn't have any other constituents in it that may not dissolve. A lot of people like to use a liquid formulation. It's a little bit less concentrated, so you actually have to use more of it for that reason. So there are certainly costs, but the, the upside of it is that um, the products are, are proven to work with conditioning water. There's one caution with water conditioners is that they, they do acidify the spray. And acidification is okay for some herbicides, but it reduces the solubility of others. Right. And finally, it can increase the volatility of the low volatile formulations of dicamba in soybeans. So in soybean country, acidification or water conditioning has to be done with great care. 
Right, absolutely. And now, um, talking about testing for for water quality, is this something that people should do annually, or where are the markers? Um, when should they get their water quality tested? And you're saying that should be done specifically through a lab, just for quality assurance. Yeah, I recommend a proper lab do that because they have the equipment and they can give you the accuracy that you need. A lot of the home spa solutions, the little sensors you can dip into it in a beaker of water, are a good start, but they don't typically give you the hard. Uh, with the accuracy that, that you need and the bicarbonates and perhaps other, other constituents. pH is fairly straightforward. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we had a drought uh, in 2021 and it was a fairly widespread drought. A lot of water levels went down. And so a uh, general recommendation is that that could have caused some water quality changes. And so I would really recommend for 2022 that water sources be, be tested. So when we have those extreme weather events, that's when uh, farmers should be looking at getting that water quality test. Otherwise, year after year of conditions are fairly negligible in change pretty okay to to leave the testing alone yeah aquifers tend to be you know ancient waters with long-term life underground so they don't change annually Uh, certainly i've seen wells that uh, they've seen reports from over years that haven't really changed appreciably but surface waters are much more susceptible to this so especially after a rainfall event you know there's other things like turbidity for example that come into play we didn't talk about that but turbidity is something that you evaluate just visually and uh, there are certain indices that are available, but we um, we have to also be careful with some herbicides because the clay that causes turbidity can also bind to some herbicides and make them unavailable. Mm-hmm. Glyphosate, Liberty are, again, the prime examples of it. Great, Tom. And if people want to find out more about water quality, where can they go? Where can they check out? Uh, on spurs101.com, uh, which is a free website available to anyone that is interested in these topics, we have several write-ups on on how to interpret a water quality test or what to do about it. Great, thanks so much, Tom.